Hello? George, it's me, Sandy. Sandy? I'm done. I finished. I know you want to hear this, and I want you to be the first. Uh-oh. That was Sandy. She's entered another writing contest. She's always saying, George, one day the world will know me by my writing. I'll let you in on a little secret. Sandy can't write. It's all a great big pile of A great big pile of words. However, she's a total fox. But it's more than that. She's like my best friend. I've been planning on asking her out forever. But I'm probably gonna tell her how I feel. Are you gonna open the door? In the really near future. Don't say a word. Just listen. Did you get a good look at her? She looks good. I think I'll ask her out right now. Didn't happen. How can somebody who looks so good write so bad? Okay, picture this in your mind. Are you ready? Captivate me. Okay. Angelica traipsed across the early American frontier carefully stepping this way and that to avoid the numerous cow pies and buffalo patties that littered the early American frontier in a way that would make anyone a little uncomfortable and a little worried about where she should put her feet. Especially seeing that Angelica had on a really terrific pair of shoes with sexy... Wait, what? What did I tell you? I know, it's off to a bad start. But she's so cute reading this story. It almost takes away the sting. It's quite... Romantic. It, now, hear the whole thing out. It gets better. And it has a surprise ending. Ooh, let's hear that ending now. George. <sighs> Angelica's dress, neat and crisp, not a speck of dirt or other matter on it, marched on. Her dress marched on? Just listen, George. Her acrylic nails caught the glow of the setting sun. Her beautiful hair was unaffected by the huge plains winds, which we all know can blow like a tornado. <laughs> her makeup was impeccable. Her lightweight windbreaker... Windbreaker? Well, an old-fashioned windbreaker, of course. You can't tell me they didn't have wind back then. Are you serious? Would you like me to pick something else? A fur coat, or perhaps a knitted tunic? Or how about not? What? I mean, if it were me, I'd just you would leave it. Do I, the story is... Nothing. Get, just the dress. You can't... Oh, okay. <laughs> Good idea, George. Shall we have an intermission for a little while? You know, take a little break? <laughs> George, you are the funniest friend I have. Now listen, this is important. And like I said, there's a surprise ending. On the horizon, just west of the setting sun, came a horseback rider. He leapt from the horse, his hair flying in the wind and allowed it to run off on its own. His hair went running off on its own? No, George. The horse. It went galloping away, back into the sunset from whence it came. Excellent finish. I didn't think you could, you could do it, but, but at the end it all came together. Nice one. George, it's not over yet. Okay. Angelica looked at the man. The man looked at Angelica. <laughs> Together they looked at one another, looking, looking, 
and looking some more, <laughs> she noticed that the man seemed an awful lot like her good friend. He was very attractive. Not too tall, not too blonde, <laughs> not too brown-eyed. <laughs> not too interesting. What? Nothing. Not too freckled. And a smile as wide as the Mississippi. That is one wild smile. You know, you're a good writer. I know. Angelica reached over and brushed off his shirt where there was a bit of Wyoming. And she ran her fingers through the wonderful man's hair. And then, even though it wasn't very ladylike, and even though girls should wait for boys to ask them out, and even though this was the early American frontier, Angelica kissed the handsome man on the lips. The story was about us. There was never Angelica and that other guy. It was you and me the whole time. Oh wow, this is great. <laughs> so you like my story? <laughs> no. I loved it. <laughs> In the story, we're more than just friends, right? <laughs> Great! <laughs> <laughs>